Currently, there is significant traffic congestion at the Panama Canal. A major traffic jam. More than 200 ships are currently waiting to cross the canal. Hundreds of ships are stuck, awaiting clearance to proceed. The number of ships permitted to transit has been reduced by up to half in the initial months of 2024. And to make this matter even worse, the weight limit for each container ship has been reduced by 40%. The renowned Panama Canal, crucial for the United States as it facilitates 40% of their container traffic, is facing a critical challenge. The canal's viability is threatened by a severe drought, exacerbating the situation. How concerned are you about the long-term viability of the Panama Canal? That is my main concern. In this video, we'll discuss why ships are stuck at the Panama Canal, the reasons behind this severe drought and potential alternatives, and what steps Panama is taking to address the drought and reduce its impact on the canal's operations. Is the Panama Canal really dying? Let's decode. Let's begin with the history of the Panama Canal and why canals in general hold such immense importance. In the sea, there are many places where ships have to take a long detour to go from one port to another, even though the distance between these ports is short. That's why canals are built, to provide shortcuts for ships. For example, before the Suez Canal was built in 1860, ships from China had to take a long journey to reach Europe, going through the South China Sea, Bay of Bengal, Indian Ocean, and finally, after crossing the entire continent, they reached Europe. This journey was 24,000 kilometers long, taking a lot of time and money. To reduce this journey, ships could have taken another route through the East China Sea, bypassing Russia via the Bering Strait, and then through the East Siberian Sea. This route was shorter at 14,000 kilometers, but ships preferred to avoid it due to ice in the sea during some months of the year, which can be difficult for ships to break through. To solve this problem and create a shortcut in the sea, the Suez Canal was built in 1859. This canal made it easier for ships to travel from the Arabian Sea to the Mediterranean Sea, reducing the journey from 24,000 kilometers to just 13,000 kilometers. Seeing the success of the Suez Canal, American shipping companies also wanted similar shortcuts. Because shipping from East America to West America, and then from West America to Europe, required ships to navigate around the South American continent. So, it was decided to build a canal between North and South America at Panama's location. However, digging the Panama Canal was not easy. Unlike in Egypt, where digging a canal was straightforward due to lower land levels and sandy soil, Panama had high rocky mountains and dense forests. Digging through these mountains was challenging, but a French company took on this difficult task in 1876. The workers risked their lives not only by cutting stones, but also by traversing through dangerous jungles filled with venomous creatures. They faced an unusual disease caused by mosquito bites. Just a few years into the project, thousands of workers fell ill, and eventually, around 5,600 workers succumbed to this deadly illness. Consequently, the French company funding the project went bankrupt and abandoned it. In 1903, the United States played a pivotal role in Panama during its period as part of Colombia, ultimately leading to Panama's Declaration of Independence. Then, in 1904, the United States took over the Panama Canal project and the engineers chose to build a canal with locks. The huge project took 10 years and required complex steam engines and advanced railway techniques. President Theodore Roosevelt backed the Panama construction project, seeing it through to completion. The Panama Canal officially opened on August 15, 1914, even though the big celebration got toned down because of World War I. Building it cost nearly $375 million, making it the priciest project the United States had ever done at that time. After the addition of Madden Dam in 1935, the Panama Canal became crucial for expanding global trade in the 20th century. The process of local management 
began in 1977 with a treaty signed by U.S. President Jimmy Carter and Panama's leader Omar Torrijos. Eventually, on December 31, 1999, the Panama Canal Authority took over full control. When it was constructed, it greatly improved international trade by making it easier, cheaper, and more convenient. Today, it remains a crucial pathway for global maritime trade. Now let's move to the next question. How exactly does the Panama Canal operate? Well, instead of trying to dig through a mountain, they made a huge lake called Garten Lake. Some of the canal goes to the Atlantic and the rest goes to the Pacific. But the big problem is getting ships up to the lake, which is way higher than the ocean. So they use something called locks, kind of like giant water elevators. When a ship comes to a lock, they fill it with water until it's the same level as the sea. Then they open the lock and the ship floats in. They use gates or sometimes even trains to help. Once the ship is in, they close the lock and start all over again with the next lock, going up and up until they reach Gatun Lake. Then after crossing the lake, they go through more locks to get back down to sea level. It's like a watery staircase that lets ships go up and over the mountains. Thousands of ships from all over the world pass through the Panama Canal each year, about 13 to 14,000. This makes up around 5% of global trade. In 2023 alone, over 14,000 ships use the canal to travel between oceans. The canal operates all day, every day, and employs about 9,000 people. Passing through this special pathway definitely comes at a cost. The canal is a big source of income for Panama, making up about 10% of the country's revenue. According to the Canal Control Authority, ships have to pay fees to use the canal. These fees vary, starting from $10,000 for the smallest ships and going up to $300,000 for the biggest container ships called Neo Panamax. During busy times like peak periods, prices can go even higher. You can understand the significance of the Panama Canal from the fact that shipping companies are increasingly willing to pay higher fees to expedite their passage through it. Bloomberg reported that a Japanese company recently set a new record by paying an additional $4 million on top of standard fees for faster transit. The Panama Canal, a vital artery for global trade, sees significant usage from the United States, with about 66% of its cargo traffic originating or concluding at US ports, while around 13% involves cargo to or from China, as recorded in 2019. What are the reasons behind the huge traffic congestion on the Panama Canal? As the operation of the canal relies on the locks, which control water levels in different sections. These locks use water sourced from Gatun Lake, and around 52 million gallons of fresh water are needed for each transit to lift and lower ships into and out of the canal. This fresh water comes from artificial lakes that rely on rainfall. There hasn't been enough rain for a while, and this has caused a serious drought. This drought might have gotten worse because of climate change. As a result, the water levels in the canal are lower than they've ever been. Due to the dwindling water resources, Panama, the custodian of the canal, cannot accommodate the usual volume of ships. While the canal typically permits around 38 ship crossings per day, it is currently limiting the transit to only 24 vessels. The Panama Canal is incredibly important because it serves as a massive shortcut for ships, allowing them to travel between oceans without having to go all the way around a continent. Many ships, including a significant number from the United States, rely on this route. However, with fewer ships able to pass through due to the current situation, everything has slowed down. Ships face longer wait times, leading to increased shipping costs. This slowdown is causing concern about its potential impact on global trade in the future. As of January 16th, 2024, the ACP has announced a restriction to 24 transits per day. 
and even further reductions to 18 ships were expected in February. To secure a spot, vessels must pay a booking fee in advance or through an ACP auction. This reduction in canal transits by about one-third will have a substantial impact on seaborne trade flows. Roughly 100 million tons of cargo, equivalent to about 35% of the cargo transported through the canal in 2022, could be affected. Many ships might opt for alternate routes, resulting in longer travel times and increased expenses. The Panama Canal has decided not to impose additional restrictions on vessel transits until at least April. Deputy Administrator Ilya Espino informed Reuters that the authority will assess water levels at the end of the dry season to determine if any further measures are necessary. If rainfall arrives as expected in May, the canal intends to gradually increase daily slots for vessel transits, aiming to reach approximately 36 vessels per day, which is the normal number during the rainy season. However, if rainfall falls short of expectations, the authority may consider implementing further restrictions on either daily passage or draft, which refers to a vessel's maximum depth. The canal currently allows ships with a maximum depth of 44 feet. The Panama Canal Authority hasn't reduced this number because it would make many ships carry less cargo, which wouldn't be profitable for transporting certain products. Container ships get first priority to go through the Panama Canal, but the restrictions on transit since last year have affected other types of ships more, especially large carriers. The need to keep water levels steady in the reservoirs supplying the canal has stopped it from handling extra demand coming from the Red Sea. There have been attacks there that have made it hard for ships to use the Suez Canal, which is the world's busiest waterway. There's been more demand for US liquefied natural gas, LNG, in Europe since 2022, so fewer LNG ships have needed to use the Panama Canal. But this might change if US sellers offer better prices to ship LNG to Asia. The situation at the canal remains uncertain, with the ACP updating its guidance in response to regional rainfall events. There's no clear indication of when the restrictions will be lifted. Meanwhile, companies relying on the canal for their supply chains will need to adapt. Contrary to what some people think, Panama can't fix the canal's problems by pumping seawater into Garten Lake because the lake provides drinking water for Panama. Other ideas, like diverting rivers to feed the canal, could harm the environment and indigenous communities. The future of the Panama Canal looks grim because of climate change and deforestation. These factors, along with severe El Nino cycles, threaten global trade, especially for the US. They also make shipping more expensive and could cause problems in the region. There is a cheaper replacement for those ships who have smaller loads. Panama Canal Rail, located on the Pacific coast in the port town of Balboa, just five miles from Panama City. Transporting goods by railway and then loading them onto ships waiting on the other side is a more cost-effective option. The Panama Canal Railway's single track handles more than 500,000 container moves every year. Trains on this railway track can run non-stop, and the wagons of this train can carry two containers of almost 55 tons of cargo at a time. To save the canal, we need to tackle climate change and stop deforestation in the Amazon. Some South American countries are trying to reduce forest loss, but they need more help and cooperation. The United States should play a bigger role in helping these countries fight illegal activities causing deforestation. If we don't act, we could lose one of the world's most important trade routes and a remarkable engineering feat led by the US.